Hey guys, excuse the bedhead. Um, this is my computer that I built a couple months ago, and I had mentioned during that video that I, uh, the cooling in this computer wasn't that great, and I was trying to improve it. You know, I drilled two extra ports on the top of the case for cooling through a 240 millimeter wide radiator for my CPU. Um, I've been playing a lot of video games with it since and found that uh, the GPU's not staying as cool as I would have liked. Um, so I've been down clocking it for the moment. I mean, uh, in some cases I've been thermally throttling my GPU, which is bad because it thermally throttles at 93 degrees Celsius, which is insane that it's been running that hot. Um, so this is the CPU, and um, I had mentioned previously I was going to do something about it, so I've got a couple ideas. So first off, I wanted to try something that I've used in the past, or one similar, which is one of these. Um, it's made by Antec. This one this is a super cyclone blower. It's a double slot impeller fan that exhausts air. Um, so this, I guess, uh, in the scenario for my computer, would be sitting in the two slots beneath my uh, GPU and would be pulling air from it. So this one, I'm not sure how well it'll work um, because it's an impeller fan that'll be pulling air out from underneath the GPU. Uh, I think it'll help. What I'm really trying to do with this is just get the hot stagnant air from the bottom of the case out. I mean, it'll be pulling from the same region that the GPU fans themselves are pulling air from to go up, only this will be pulling it down and out. So I, I don't know what that'll do. Hopefully this will mostly get better airflow underneath the GPU and that, that's kind of the scope of um, this entire thing. Now if this doesn't work I've got a couple other ideas. So um, I've got more fan filters and mesh and stuff like that. Um, I picked up a bunch of fans. Um, I picked up some vented expansion slot covers um, the purposes of which are for mounting possibly an exhaust fan where the empty ports are on the rear of my case. So I picked up some more uh, Noctua fans because I'm worried in part also that this Antec cooler um, is going to be too loud. This Antec cooler is not PWM, it's a Molex power connection and it's got three speed settings and that's it. I'm afraid this is going to be loud, which I really don't want because I built this whole case to try and be quiet. So. I've got a, a few different options. I've got uh, Noctua 40 millimeter uh, fan. I've got a couple of those to see if maybe those will work um, somewhere on the rear side of the case near the bottom. You know, I've got an 80 millimeter fan, uh, which I'll see if I could fit in the back of the case. But if not, I've got another idea for this one. And then I've got um, uh, what are these 60 millimeter Noctua fans? So. Yeah, I've got kind of a range. If the 40 millimeter seems too small, which it might be, and this has really low airflow, 60 millimeter might be better. Um, and I've got a couple of each of those. But if those don't work, I can try an 80 millimeter and kind of make an enclosure for it to funnel the air out. Although, if I'm going that far, I think the impeller fan would be better since this is purpose built for pulling air out the back of the case. That way, impeller fan is going to be much more effective than you know, a straight airflow fan. Um, the problem being the impeller fan is not PWM. And I'm, I'd have to look into maybe voltage control on this. I know one, one thing that would definitely fix this is um, <laughs> cutting a hole in the side of the case, but I don't want to do that because I really like this side window. Um, other option would be possibly cutting a hole in the bottom of the case to get air in or out through the bottom and then I would just have to have this up on a stand or up on my computer desk, but I don't want to do more metal cutting if I can avoid it. Now, um, to be less invasive, since uh, I have a fully modular power supply and I didn't use any Molex connectors um, for this build, I don't want to have to go get the Molex cable out and plug it in just to test this super cyclone blower. Um, uh, one thing that I really like about these USB adapters is they come with power supplies with a single Molex connection, which is really great. Um, if you ever want to test something that's powered by a SATA or a Molex. So what I'm going to be doing is turning on this computer and then separately powering this impeller fan so that way I can independently control it and get it installed and removed more quickly. Well, I had a bit of a difficulty here, so it's uh, uh, later in the day. Um, I was, you know, mentioning I used this adapter 
that has a single Molex power plug, which allows me to plug things in separately from uh, the power supply on my PC. Um, earlier today when I tried, however, I uh, ended up finding out using a multimeter that one of the ground connections on this Molex plug is bad. It's not grounding correctly. Um, so Molex power plugs have um, a 5 volt connection on one side, a 12 volt connection on the other, and then the two middle are actually grounds. And the ground on the side of the 12 volt wasn't working. So this was powering SATA drives, and it was powering certain light strips, but it wasn't powering others. And I eventually figured it out with the multimeter that not the 12 volt that's bad, but the, uh, the ground next to it. So um, I'm going to kind of finagle this to make it work. I'm going to plug this in, turn it on, but I'm going to be essentially shorting one of the grounds to the other ground using a paper clip. Um, and this is possible because the, uh, the Molex connector for the, uh, the Vantec fan that I'm using has a pass-through. Uh, so I can connect power to the fan and then actually um, short the grounds on the opposite side of the pass-through. That's what I'm going to do. So, Molex power supply is powered, but the switch is not on. Plugged in, and should now be grounded. So I'm going to turn this on, and the fan is starting. If you can hear that, this is on low. That's medium. And that's high. Now I have the background of one of my PC's fans running, so that might not be clear to you independently, but getting pretty good airflow. So there it is. Oh, that's what it's calling me. So there it is on low power. You can hardly hear it on low. I actually don't mind that. I mean, it's louder than the Noctua fans, but should not be bad. So uh, I'm going to plug this in. So there's a bit of a gap there. Uh, you know, one slot. Maybe actually slightly less. Uh, we're going to try this with and without the fan, um, which means i got to get uh, some video games running and get this uh, computer up to temperature. So as you can see here, um, currently I've been running with the uh, GPU clock down 10% and the power limit down 10%. I'm going to reset those back to zero. I'm going to apply that. You can see also currently the temperature of the GPU is 34 degrees. Okay, so uh, it's time to start up some uh, dying light. This is probably good enough. 
So I'm about to run a GPU stress test using the solid side panel window. Starting temperatures, uh, I just ran a test, so it's starting a little bit warm. The uh, R9 390 is starting at 53 degrees Celsius. My CPU is 21, 22 degrees Celsius. It's not really going to change during the test. And uh, motherboard, uh, we've got a couple around 30 degrees Celsius, one at 36, and then the high one at 48 degrees Celsius. So we're going to run this Furmark test and see uh, how many minutes it takes to thermally throttle the GPU, it should only take a couple minutes. Okay, we just hit 93 degrees Celsius in about three minutes using for a mark. Uh, noting that we did start a little bit warm, but three minutes until we thermally throttled. Okay, so the plan was to try and use rear exhaust fans to try and get the heat away from my GPU, uh, but the impeller fan from Antec is not working. I'm still thermally throttling my GPU when I'm gaming at uh, normal voltages and uh, the normal uh, clock rate. So. I don't think that anything I could finagle to try and get fans pulling air out the back of the case is going to work. I'm just finding that all of this heat is getting dumped off the GPU towards the side window. And uh, despite my best intentions, I'm going to have to do something about the side window. Um, now what I really wanted to avoid is having to cut into the acrylic, but it looks like that's going to have to happen. But I really didn't want to you know, risk damaging my you know, my side panel because I really like it and this case isn't made anymore. Um, so what I was able to do is go online and Leon Lee makes standard mid and full size ATX side panels that you can buy separately. So this is the original and I've been able to get a replacement one. Now it doesn't look exactly the same, but it actually has some interesting improvements. For one, the acrylic on it is just screwed on with screws. It's not actually riveted on like the old side window. So I'm going to keep the side window that has the riveted joints off to the side. I'm going to keep that in case or so I can have it. This new one that I bought, which was about $40, it's more than I wanted to spend, but hey, this is just to play around with. So, you know, I'm just messing around and, and cost isn't really a big deal to me. So it's still got the plastic on it. The idea is that I'm going to cut at least one 120 millimeter fan cutout on the acrylic. Now the risk here is that I've cut acrylic before and drilling holes in acrylic can be tedious and if you do it wrong you can crack it and that would be bad. Uh, I think I can cut the large hole for the fan itself that the air to pass through pretty readily but cutting four bolt holes through it without cracking the acrylic I'm more worried about. Um, for the moment I'm just going to try and put in one 120 millimeter fan mount. Uh, put a fan in and then see if I can keep the temperatures lower. Uh, I'm going to keep the impeller fan in at the same time and see if that works. Well, I don't want to make this as complicated as my measurements before when I was working on my case. So uh, this is the new side panel window. It's still got plastic protective cover on it. I'm just leaving it on there for the moment. I've got this 120 millimeter um, fan grating. I also have this Corsair fan, which I'm just using for a guide to get outlines. I think I'm going to want to put my fan just about here. This will focus so most of the hot air that it's pulling is coming off of the, uh, the heat sink of the GPU and it's pulling maybe a little bit of air along the top of the GPU. About that height is good.
Aside from turning the uh, machine, but uh, looks pretty good. And I'm gonna mount it and see how it looks. exhaust fan mounted with a large mesh block, an inner fine mesh block, a rubber pad for vibration isolation, and the fan itself. And it's all mounted and looks like it's pretty secure. I've got washers on this side. So that doesn't look half bad actually. I surprise myself every day. Hey, you know. The whole cut isn't the best. It's round. It's basically covered by this large mesh grate. So now the idea is, on the inside, I'm going to be running this cable down along the bottom like so. Run, run it on top of this and then run it up to here and have an extension attached to the case, well to the Corsair Link Commander and then I'll plug it in here. So whenever I want to remove the, the case uh, side panel, I'll just make the disconnect over here. Okay, now I've got my computer uh, set up on the table, so the plan is to replace the side panel and get it wired and also get my rear impeller fan wired up using the cables which I have available. I have a SATA Molex adapter, then I've got the SATA power extension cable which is sleeved. This, these together, this and this, will power the impeller fan in the back of the case. This should get me enough distance to a SATA power cable. Then for the side panel window I have this, which is a sleeved 4 pin to 4 pin PWM extension cable. plugged in again. You know, cable management is not the greatest, but uh, we're going to plug in. Let's turn it on. Well, the fan's spinning. The rear impeller fan is spinning, so everything's getting powered the way it should. 
This thing is going to suck air out of there like you wouldn't believe. It's so much louder though. I really don't like that. There, I just put it into a quiet mode. Let me do a fixed percentage and see how low I can get it. See, that's much better. That's 50% power. Max speed. And 50%. So here we are. We're starting out. We're just going to do it. Going to do a comparison test here with the new fans of uh, Dying Light. So let's try it out. So this is showing uh, maximum 50 degrees Celsius on the motherboard. Maximum. 50 degrees Celsius for the CPU and 72 degrees or so, 72 degrees Celsius on the graphics card. This is after maybe 15 minutes of play. So, great improvement. I am no longer hitting, you know, 90 degrees Celsius while playing Dying Light. So, I'd consider that a good improvement. Okay, now with the new side panel fan installed running a custom fan curve we're gonna run the stress test again so this time we're starting with um, Motherboard temperatures around 30 to 37 degrees Celsius. We've got a 28, a 30, a 34, and a 36. We've got CPU temperatures between 21 and 23 degrees Celsius. And a GPU temperature around 32 degrees Celsius. So let's get started. Okay, so I've been running Fermart for about 15 minutes now, and uh, GPU temperature is sitting at 90 degrees Celsius, and it's pretty much leveled off. So not not exactly what I was looking for. Okay, so I've run Fermart for you know about 15 minutes, and uh, to compare it to my previous results before I put this side panel fan in, and it looks like Fermart's leveling out around 88 degrees Celsius for the GPU. Now, that doesn't sound very great, but compared to what used to be happening, which is that it would be maxing out at 93 degrees Celsius and thermally throttling, I think this is an, an improvement. Additionally, uh, my CPU has never been an issue, but my motherboard temperatures are also down because of the side panel fan. Um, previously, I had one uh, motherboard temperature that would get up to 70 degrees Celsius, and now it's not really exceeding 55 degrees Celsius, even using Fermark. Now, if I asked myself, had I met the goals of what I wanted to do with this computer in this case, I would say probably not, um, because the case is still keeping things a little bit hotter than I would have liked, and I've made compromises to try and get the temperatures down already by using, you know, a rear impeller fan that's uh, not PWM, it's not really controllable, it, you, you have three settings and that's it, and for having to buy a new side panel and put a side panel fan in, just to try and get temperatures down, that kind of compromises on what my original plans were, which were to avoid cutting into the side panel and keep everything PWM using silent fans. And it's obvious from these videos, as you're watching, I hope, that uh, when this temperature gets up to, you know, in the 80s degrees Celsius area, the fans get really, really loud. I mean, specifically, the side panel fans getting louder. Now, it's a Corsair fan and not an Octua fan, and I'm probably going to replace that at some point. But I have a feeling the Noctua fan is not going to pull as much air as the Corsair fan, and I might not get the same kind of temperature improvements that I have now. 
Now, for real-world examples, I mean, Furmark is really burning in your graphics card. I mean, it even warns you before you run the test that, the, you know, this is very graphics-intensive warning you could damage your equipment. Um, more real-world-wise, what video games have I been playing? Well, I showed before using Dying Light. You know, I was hitting 88 degrees Celsius in this video, but I could thermally throttle it up to 93 degrees Celsius playing Dying Light, no problem. Um, now, with a side panel fan put in with custom fan curves, I'm not exceeding 73 degrees Celsius on the GPU, which is a lot better. That, that looks like what everyone else is getting when they use um, R9-390s online. I'm seeing a lot of, you know, 73 degrees Celsius max temperatures when people are uh, using high performance video games and uh, benchmarks. So 73 degrees Celsius for a GPU from AMD seems more reasonable to me. So I think that this is an improvement. I would have liked not to have to do it. But, you know, uh, it was interesting to, you know, have to do a case mod. I haven't really done a good case mod before. Anyway, so uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope I wasn't too verbose. I didn't talk too much. And uh, maybe in the future I can find some more interesting stuff that uh, is worth taking video of. I'll see you guys later.